All of us are trying to figure out what the next step is for us. All of us are trying to do new things and different things that we probably haven't ever done before. So no matter what stage of the journey you're at, no matter how successful you become, there's always things you realize you don't blooming know. All of us are just human. So last week I put out a podcast episode that if I'm being completely honest with you, I was really nervous to hit send on and every now and again there's a podcast episode I put out there and I film it and then afterwards I'm like, oh my gosh, like, did I just say way too much? I feel exposed and I'm like, I don't think I can put this out there. And then um, it's always those episodes that always get the best response, but sometimes I just really don't want to hit send on them. Um, But I have had the sweetest responses and actually a few of you messaging me telling me that you were crying listening to it because you so deeply resonated and connected with the things that I was sharing. I was talking about like the struggles I've been going through lately of just feeling utterly lost and you know how this happens to all of us building businesses especially. So if you haven't listened to that episode definitely check it out from last week. Um, But one of the pieces of feedback that has come back from like the responses of it is um, you know this phrase that is coming up on I feel like I'm so hard on myself. And this is a phrase I've I've kind of heard a lot randomly over the past few days that keeps coming up. And I feel like this is something for us to talk about because I know I am so hard on myself too. And I also know how much I can derail myself by being hard on myself. In fact, I this has been a struggle of mine forever, which is why all the inner work for me has been absolutely essential because I will knock myself down. I will self-sabotage. I will talk myself out of doing things. Um, if I give myself half a chance, I will do that. So I've really, really had to work on myself so that I get out of my own way so that I can actually create the success that I want. Um, but just to put it into perspective, just to let you know, this does still truly well and truly affect me to this day. Um, a couple of weeks ago or a few weeks ago now, I received a message on Instagram from someone who 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 I saw talk at um, a Tony Robbins event and he's doing great things. He's got massive following and just an amazing, amazing person. And he reached out just saying that he had seen why I was doing my membership site and he wanted to find out more about working, like consulting with me on, because he wanted to start a membership site. And I was like, my God, this is amazing. And you know what came up? all of my imposter syndrome. And I literally, my default was to be like, but what do I know? And what if I can't help him? And um, like literally tearing myself apart, bringing myself down, even though I have bloody been building a membership site since 2013, have built a membership site to over 5,000 members. I mean, like that in itself is so incredible to have built a membership site that has a multiple seven-figure revenue stream is unbelievable. Yet there I was literally thinking, who am I to help someone with a membership site? Um, What if I can't help him? I don't know what I'm talking about. Like, honestly. Um, And so, you know, and this is to the point where I'm in a mastermind group and I posted in the mastermind group, kind of sharing a little bit about what was happening and said, do any of you feel or struggle with this where you kind of doubt yourself and you question your expertise, you question your knowledge. And then to have really successful people respond saying, Carrie, this is completely normal. Made me feel like, oh my gosh, like I'm glad it isn't just me that does this crap. (laughs) like literally we all do it. And I remember once listening to this Masters of Scale podcast episode and it, he had like, I think it was like the founder of Airbnb and some of, founders of some really massive companies. And they were talking about like, what has been your biggest struggle in business? And one of them turned around and said, my biggest struggle has been myself and overcoming my own fears and doubts and worries. And honestly, at that moment, I turned to Kel and my husband because we were listening to it together in the car. And I was like, that feels like such a relief to hear somebody that has built an unbelievably successful, massive company saying that that is, that continues to be his biggest struggle because all of us 
are just human and all of us are trying to figure out what the next step is for us. So no matter whether we've got tons of experience looking back, each all of us are trying to do new things and different things that we probably haven't ever done before. So no matter what stage of the journey you're at, no matter how successful you become, there's always things you realize you don't blooming know. So you're always feeling like you're new to something or you're trying to figure something new out and you're back at square one again. So that feeling, that imposter syndrome, those doubts, those worries that, you know, is being hard on ourselves always creeps back in. And like, I know for me, this has, this has been such a challenge. And I also know having, you know, you know, especially having have built this community over the past, you know, 11 years and have talked, you know, I've talked to so many women building businesses. I know this is a big thing that so many of us, probably all of us struggle with, like being really hard on ourselves, hard on ourselves when we make mistakes, hard on ourselves when things aren't going the way we want, hard on ourselves when we're not as successful as we want to be, hard on ourselves when we feel like we're just not a failure. Um, and, and I think this really links into the conversation that I was sharing last week around like feeling lost, because when we are feeling lost and confused, um, I think that like this feeds into, you know, us being hard on ourselves. And I think us being hard on ourselves also feeds into us feeling utterly lost and confused because we're just like in this cycle of self-sabotage. And so I feel like it, again, it's like one of those important topics for us to talk about. And again, like I wanted to be open and honest and share the fact that literally recently I really did feel like I was being so hard on myself, like thinking, Who am I to help someone else? Who am I to do this? And I, but I'm also really aware that I am not going to let myself hold myself back. And I think that is the key here. All of us can have these thoughts and feelings, but it's like, what are you going to choose to do with it? And for me, this is where a level of awareness comes, self-awareness comes in, of knowing, of tuning in with yourself and recognizing I am talking crap to myself. Like, hang on, am I actually, like how much is this holding me back and impacting me going forward? How much is this holding me back and stopping me from going forward with my ideas and creating the success that I want? How much is this impacting my joy and my happiness in my life? And then getting a grip on it and doing something about it. Um, And I think that being able to do that and to tune in and to choose a different way, choose a different thought, choose different feelings is what's helped me to keep going and keep creating the success, even though I've just felt like I've felt the feelings, I've felt the imposter syndrome, I've, I've been, I've been really, really hard on myself. I've made myself, I mean, the way I've talked to myself sometimes in my head is absolutely atrocious. And in fact, I got this, I I knew in my book, She Means Business, I wrote a little bit about this. And I took this quote from a book that's um, by Dan Millman. And he has a book called Body, Mind, Mastery, Creating Success in Sports and Life. And he said, if babies held the same tendency towards self-criticism as adults, they might never learn to walk or talk. Can you imagine infants stomping ah, oh, screwed up again. Um, like, obviously, no, like that would never happen. Like a kid, a baby would never do that. And also if you think about it and you think about sometimes the way you might speak to yourself, would you ever speak to a friend the same way? Probably never. You would never be that rude to someone else. So why do we think it's okay for us to be that rude to ourselves? Um, and so, for me, I, again, having that awareness of realizing, wow, I'm really pulling myself down here. I'm really spiraling. I'm really self-sabotaging. I know I need to do something about it. And you probably know what I'm going to say, because I always talk, say this, come back to this this quote, this, this way of thinking. Victor Frankl in his back ma- book, Man's Search for Meaning, said, everything in life can be taken away from you except for your freedom to choose how you respond. How do you choose to respond when it, you're self-sabotaging? I mean, that is not an external circumstance. That is us doing it to ourselves. But how do you choose to respond? Do you choose to think like, um, when you're hard on yourself or you've messed up or you feel like you're failing or things aren't going the way you want them to, or you've got imposter syndrome, whatever it is, whatever's coming up for you, do you choose to accept that as the truth? Or do you recognize I need to choose a different thought? I need to choose to reframe and get a different perspective on this 
Otherwise, I'm going to hold myself back and I'm not going to enable myself to get to where I want to go or it, I'm not even going to allow myself to feel good, uh, you know. So for example, if I take this situation with this guy reaching out to me and wanting my help and then me like spiraling into imposter syndrome and having this little freak out, in that moment, I could have continued to spiral and felt like an imposter and then not spoken to him and not done all that stuff, um, which could have been a reality, could have been a path that I walked. It's a path that a lot of people choose to walk where their self-sabotage is so loud. That's the path they follow. That's the truth that they, that's their truth that they walk rather than thinking, taking that step back, changing the perspective and looking at like it from another angle, from another lens. And so for me, that looked like, Carrie, bloody get a grip of yourself. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> like you've been doing this for a long time, looking at what I have achieved and the success. And yes, I don't know everything. And it's not about being perfect. It's not about having all the answers. Do I have all the answers on building a successful membership site? Absolutely not. But do I know what my experience has been? Is that valuable? Can I share my experience? Absolutely, yes. And for me, this has always been a really powerful reframe. And I know this is only a reframe in terms of like sharing knowledge, for example. They were a good one because I know so many people who want to write a book but haven't written a book because they uh, are hard on themselves and they think, who am I to write a book? And it's the same for the people who want to create courses or want to create a membership site. They kind of are really hard on themselves and they have imposter syndrome and like, well, who am I to do this? Who am I to create this? Who am I to start that podcast? Who am I to say this stuff? And we feel like we're not good enough. We feel like we need more qualifications. You know, all of the things, you know it, you've probably felt it a million times. But the truth is, none of us have to be an expert. Like no one is a complete expert really at anything. We're all on this journey of learning and figuring things out. All we ever have to do is share our own experiences. And that really, really helped me. For example, when I was writing my book, because I could not write it from the perspective of like, I'm writing a business book and I don't know everything about business. I only know what I know about business. I only know my experience of business. I only know what I've been through when it comes to building a business. And that's not everything. That's just like this tiny little stamp of like mark in time. Like, you know, my experience is not that vast, but like what I had learned and what I had been through was like, an amazing experience. And I was able to share that with other people. And then that helped people that were a few steps behind where I was at. And I think that's the key is that, um, when, you know, when it comes to that side of being hard on ourselves and bringing ourselves down is you only have to be one step or two steps ahead of the person behind, you know, that you're going to help, um, with sharing what you're sharing and, you know, that when it comes to knowledge, we get to choose how we want to respond when we are self-sabotaging and, you know, it's so easy as well for other people to criticize us and for us to then take on that belief and then become even harder on ourselves because someone else has validated something about us that, um, you know, that's not even true. And I think we take on all these lies about ourselves and we forget like who we are and we forget how bloody great we actually are. And, and because of that, it causes us to play so much smaller and we hold ourselves back so much. So many people never ever go after their dreams or don't continue to go after their dreams because they are so hard on themselves. And I think for me, one of the biggest things that also shifts my perspective on this and helps me to actually keep going is the the, the whole realization and thought that, and again, I say this all the time, that this is it. Like this is not a dress rehearsal we get one life and we have to be here to make it bloody amazing. Otherwise, what the hell is the point? So it's like going to the end of it all and asking ourselves the question, um, what do I want? What would I, you know, if I had, you know, looking back, what would I choose to do? Would I choose to keep being so hard on myself? Would I choose to keep bringing myself down? Would I choose to keep believing I can't do something? Would I choose to keep believing that my mistakes define me? Um, or am I going to choose to believe in myself? Am I going to choose to empower myself? Am I going to choose to keep going? And it is a choice. It might be, feel like it's a difficult choice. You might feel like, yeah, but Carrie, how do I choose? How do I choose? You just decide you're going to choose. And then you begin to every day start choosing. 
and start becoming more conscious of what you're telling yourself and deciding that you're going to tell yourself a new story. And that's it. It's that simple. It doesn't need to be complicated. And at first you might feel like it's so fake. Like I'm telling myself this new story about myself, that I can do this, that I'm actually good, that I'm going to be kind to myself. I'm actually going to praise myself. I'm going to think about all the ways I am amazing. I'm going to think about um, what I am actually really good at. I'm going to give myself credit. I'm going to um, feel like I am actually qualified. And you might feel like it feels fake. But I tell you, the more you do it, the more you get comfortable telling yourself those stories, the more it, one day it'll just feel like it's just your natural narrative. And it's the, it's what you tell yourself. Now, doesn't that mean that you're not going to ever experience imposter syndrome or ever be hard on yourself ever again? No, because like I am the person that does the inner work to work on my, all those, that, you know, that side of me, that negative committee that meets in my head, that makes me feel like I can't bloody do anything. And, um, they're always, they're always there, like, um, popping up and whittering away, uh, you know, making me feel crappy about something or other. But then there's the other part of me that is able to shut them off and to allow my dreams and desires to be louder than they are. And um, that's just something that I've practiced doing. I've practiced turning the volume up on the side of me that says, actually, Carrie, you you can do this. You are going to do this you are good enough. Even if you don't feel good enough, you are good enough. And life is just a fun experiment and a fun experience. And you get to play, you get to make up your own rules. You get to play by, you know, your own game. You get to go after it and do the things that you want to do. And I think when you, when I tell myself that it really empowers me to show up for it, show up for my dreams, show up for the things that I want. Um, so, thinking about yeah so basically make that choice think about all the ways that you actually are amazing think about um how you can start talking to yourself in a way that's so much more kinder think about um how you empower others and what you say to empower others and start using that language with yourself start being more intentional about how you speak to yourself and making sure that you are speaking to yourself in a kinder way and i do honestly think that it is life changing Because I know before I really started to focus on doing that, that life was so much more difficult. It was so much more challenging because I was always dragging myself down. I was always self-sabotaging and it was a spiral and it can spiral out of control as we all well know, but it doesn't have to. And you can pick yourself up and you can start going up and up and up and up and feeling so much better about yourself. Um, so I just, yeah, I just really wanted to share this and it's, and, um, I I don't necessarily think that it's like a list of tips that anyone needs to follow. I think even just the power of making that choice, choosing to be kinder, um, is, is enough in itself. Um, so pay more attention to what you're, what's going on internally, pay more attention to that internal dialogue and when you need to, when you feel like you are being really hard on yourself, think about how you could give yourself a break. Think about the words and the language that you can use with yourself to give yourself a break and to empower yourself. Um, we have to be our own best friends, not our own worst enemies. Um, so yeah, we're all in this together. We all go through this together. And I especially think that when you're going after dreams and you're trying to build a business and it's you and your idea and you're trying to take this idea and turn it into reality um or whenever you're doing something new and it feels uncomfortable and it feels scary we all have such a tendency to lack confidence in ourselves and to feel like we're not capable and to um feel like we're frauds and we don't know what we're doing we're all in the same boat all of us are in the same boat and I wanted to share that from my perspective and share that experience that I had recently because when I heard other people talking about it and when I heard the people in my mastermind group agreeing and saying that they had experienced that, it made me feel just a little bit better (laughs) about myself and it made me feel like I'm not alone and like that you can be really, really successful and happy but also experience those things. It's just knowing 
how to how to work your way through them um and that's the key and, and, and that looks different for everyone but i do think the biggest thing of all is that decision to choose to see things differently to choose a different perspective and if we can do that we can change our entire lives <sighs> so that's all i'm going to say um if you want to keep chatting about this always email me um let me know connect with me um, message me on Instagram um, I'm always here um, and as always if you have enjoyed this episode and you haven't left me a review on Apple Podcasts, I would love you to leave me one because whenever I get reviews on this podcast it really helps me to it helps spread the word and helps new people to discover it so I'd really appreciate that uh, and I will see you next week for another episode of the She Meets Business Show